Boston Celtics at the Washington Wizards. First game on our slate. And right now, the uh, Celtics are laying 13 and a half. Uh, Wizards plus 650 on the money line. If you if you like to uh, lay minus 1,000, you can do that on the Celtics just to win this game. Total sitting at 232. I missed it uh, game one, but uh, I will get back on the uh, trend of the Celtics cruising early and often. Uh, give me Celtics first quarter minus four and a half Celtics first half minus eight. That was a machine last year and it seemed to pick up right where it left off. Now, I, I, obviously the counter for this is, well, Celtics are smelling themselves after that uh, start of the season, but I still think they got a, a little, um, you know, it, it definitely felt personal. Now, maybe that was just that first game at home. You know, they were trying to make a statement and maybe now they, they go to Washington, they're in cruise control, but I, I don't know. I don't get that sense from the Celtics team, at least not right now where they're at in the season. So I think they're going to be good early. Couldn't talk me into any sort of wizard stuff. Um, as as big as the spread is, I'm not going to get cute and play the wizards. Give me the Celtics first quarter. I'll lay in the points and first half lay in the eight there. Noops, there's no reason to be betting on the wizards here, right? Other than the fact that all three of us are really, really bullish on the Celtics, no. Um, yeah. I, I just, this is 13 and a half. There are a lot of people that I know that think this should be 15 and a half, 16 and a half, somewhere in that range. But it's early in the season. It's hard to figure out what sort of effort we're going to get from Boston after that great first night. They go on the road here to Washington. It's not really a spot where we'll get their best effort. Last season, they did basically just crush the Wizards four times. I think scored 130 points in all four of those games. So that's kind of the angle that I'm looking at. Washington was a team that. Uh, last year, we we bet on him, Sean. If prices yeah. like this and spots like this, I'd take the 13, 14, 15, whatever it was. A little different team here. You know, they've got Sar. They've moved a couple pieces. Danny Avdia goes out. Uh, probably fine. a worse team than it was last year. So not really sure what to expect from Washington. So, again, as I mentioned yesterday and will continue throughout the season, team total is a really nice way to hone in on one aspect and kind of take some other stuff to have a little bit of a cleaner handicap. So I like Boston early. Go ahead. Play the spread first quarter. Play this bed first half. I'm going to go a little different direction and just play some team total overs here. Their first quarter team total sits at 31 and a half. Their first half team total sits at 63. I had them closer to 33 and 65, almost 66 myself for those numbers. We saw how quickly they want to play. We know Washington likes to push pace even after the coaching change that Doug reminded me about. Totally forgot that the Wizards apparently had two coaches last Last year um, still played fast and expect them to do tonight. So not sure what I'm going to get out of Washington here, kind of a funky matchup and spot for Boston, but still expect the Celtics to play fast, to shoot a lot of threes and score points in bunches, especially early. So Celtics first quarter team total over 31 and a half and their first half team total over 63 and a half. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm with you on all that stuff. I, I usually just go the, the side versus the team total, but I see the, the angle for both there. Um, Doug, is there anything we're missing? Should we, should we be trying to talk ourselves in the wizards fading the public here maybe, or is that just getting too cute? Yeah, I'm on board with everything we discussed about Celtics. I'll lay the 13 and a half for the game. I like the first half as well. Team total. I like as well. I, I think these are things we can't overthink. And with, with NBA betting across the board, when there's a lot of volume, you can't be afraid to lose a bet. Is there a scenario where they don't cover the first half? The Wizards, you know, somehow schedule the best team in the NBA for their homecoming game and their opener and play well. And Celtics, a little bit of a, you know, like you said, it felt personal in the game. Like maybe a little bit of a flat start. Missoula has to call a timeout. Or, sure. Like this is not, we don't have tomorrow's newspaper. I get it. But these are the situations where you want to play the first half and the team totals because their offense is so overwhelming. Along those lines, there are prop bets. And I don't know if the right term is derivative, you know, the derivatives, but when when the market has moved from, 12 and a half to 13 and a half and there's 14s popping up and what we saw just you know nearly an NBA record for three pointers made in a game the only reason they didn't uh, break it is because they missed their final 13 of the game <laughs> the other night is you can start just betting these game props right not necessarily uh, individual player props but the game props where the Celtics made three pointers I don't think the Wizards are going to come out and like pull a w old school Wojo, slap the defensive floor at half court and D him <laughs> up. Like, the Celtics are going to bombs Great. away 
And maybe Tatum's not going to make eight threes, right? Maybe he'll go back to his two or three a game, but this Boston team's going to shoot early and often. So over eight, over 17 and a half made threes or 18 plus made threes. Uh, a lot of these team props is plus money. You can even do alt lines on that. 20 or more made threes for the Celtics is plus 300 at some places. So uh, I don't think this is a you know market or an index that's going to really catch up to across the league, right? Look at what the Suns did in the first half. I think 16 of their 25 makes came from three. I mean, th- these teams are just chucking and even more so than we've seen in recent years. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of ways to kind of scoop some extra value if you think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, I like that approach. You know, obviously the the first half stuff as well, but then, you know, digging around, poking around, um, you know, that is how you kind of can find some nice caches where it's like, hey, you expect you're expecting this kind of game script game flow. Well, hey, this means this is going to probably happen as well as this. And you can find some better prices pulling it up from last year. Celtics were 66, 34 and one ATS in the first half, which is insane i mean because obviously the market tried to adjust tried to catch up and and just couldn't like they couldn't make that number big enough uh for the celtics in the first half last year already off to a one and zero start we'll see if that continues tonight but officially noops on the first quarter team total over first half team total over for the celtics 63 and 31 and a half respectively i'm going uh the spread there first quarter minus four and a half First half minus eight. Doug is going uh, full game. First half, and Boston eighteen made three pointers with a nice juicy price at plus one thirty five, and the team total over sixty three. So hopefully, <laughs> Celtics feels all- like online shopping, right? Like this is uh, we just <laughs> all these all these options on the screen just cl- <laughs> yeah, yeah, clicks like add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. <laughs> Yeah, while we're there, all right, toss in that. Oh, yeah, well, if they're going to cover the spread, they'll probably hit their team total and they'll probably hit some threes. So let's just pile on the Celtics. Uh, worst case, uh, you know, doesn't come through and the Celtics lose. That would be, uh, as a Sixers fan, that's a nice emotional hedge there. 